here is the, here are the revenues between 1999 and 2009. And unlike, if you may have seen other revenue examinations, I'm controlling for inflation, all right, which makes the revenue differential bigger than if I didn't control for inflation. And it's, it's a tremendous decline. Uh, these are 2009 dollars, so these dollars for 1999 are higher than they were in 1999. But it's approximately 18 billion then, and it's approximately 7 billion now. It's a big decline. Uh, rarely do we see industries with this type of decline in the 10 year period. All right, if the automobile industry had any type of decline, I guess it would be in the news every day. Um, here are the, all the major, the top 10 markets in the world. Right? It's not just the U.S. thing. In fact, the U.S. Is not, does not have the biggest declines. Italy and Spain have bigger declines. And yes, Japan has a smaller decline. But every one of the top 10 markets has a big decline. And one of the other things about the top 10 markets is they're usually highly industrialized. They have computers. They have the Internet. And so they're all capable of having file sharing as well. And they all did have various types of file sharing. And so... It's not just the U.S., it's the entire industrial world. All right, so the question is, uh, we had this enormous cause, we had this enormous effect. Is that enough to say that file sharing uh, has, is responsible for the decline that's occurred? I actually think the answer is yes. You can stop here and say that the case is really made, that you don't need anything else. All right, but uh, there are many who say that file sharing hasn't caused this decline. And I can understand at least saying, let's at least look for some possible alternatives. Oh, would everyone please turn their phones off? Come on. One, two, three. Goodbye. Yeah. Here we go. Come on. Turn off. Thank you. All right. Yes, I, I, I bought that. That's my favorite music from college. All right. Um, the question is, did I buy the newer version when the cassettes came out, or did I just copy it? Um, but, okay. So, people have come up with... Oh, I jumped ahead. All right. All right. What, is there something else that could have caused it? That is reasonable to look at. After all, if there's something else that is equally plausible... Right, we would at least want to look at that. And people have, in fact, uh, created, come up with other possible explanations. Now, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the conversion of LPs into CDs, the, taking an old library of music and turning it into new music, uh, the increase in DVDs and video games. I'm not going to talk about music getting bad. That is the hard thing to measure. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> you just got old. It just seems like the music got bad. Um, the, uh, the fact is that I, well, I wrote a paper or two looking at this. I actually did try to come up with a measure for whether or not music was getting bad. I looked at concerts, and I looked at radio, and I looked at radio for old music versus new music on radio. Radio was down, but not the stations that were playing the, more new, the newer music. They actually were doing fine, and concert sales were up. So there was really no evidence that the music had gotten bad. Uh, bad economy, well, it turns out if we exclude the recession, the severe one in 2008-2009, that the rece only recession that occurred in the 2000s prior to that was the mildest recession we've had yeah, since World War II, basically. All right, so the tech bust recession was extremely mild. And every other decade had more severe recessions than the tech. So that this is also doesn't, uh, doesn't hold up very well. Uh, this is a bit of a joke that people are spending so much on the iPods and the hardware, they have no money left for the software. Obviously, you have to use them together. The amount that you would spend under normal circumstances would be for the combined combination. And you're only spending money on, on the hardware and then not being able to afford software if you pl are planning not to pay for the software. Otherwise, it would make no sense to buy a piece of hardware that you'll never be able to use. And uh, the outbreak of deafness is also a bit of a joke. Yes, if we were all getting deaf, we probably wouldn't listen to music as much, but I'm not aware of any major outbreak. Um, and uh, so the three alternatives that are getting the most credence 
in the uh, analysis that people are putting forward are the library and then the DVD and the video games. All right, so I thought we would look at that uh, for uh, a moment. All right, uh, none of them are going to hold up very well. The library story is that you have an LP and you listen to LPs and then cassettes come along or CDs come along and you can't play your LPs anymore and you certainly can't play your LP in the car. Uh, and so now you go buy them in a new form, which is the new format. So you buy a CD because you want to play it in your CD player and you, you can't stick that old LP record into your CD player. All right. So the claim is that uh, you're artificially, if you want to use that term, quote, it's quotes around artificial, buying more music than you otherwise would because you want to convert your old favorites into the new technology. Uh, and that's certainly possible. Uh, it seems reasonable that people would do some amount of that. Um, and, but to explain the decline that I just showed you seems uh, to be pushing it fairly hard because that would imply that a tremendous amount of the sales are in fact due to uh, people replacing music and they stopped in 1999 suddenly replacing it and sales then instead of going down one time because whatever the replacement value was, now it's down to zero go down year after year after year. So it's hard to e even make sense of this entirely unless we're always replacing a little less each year. And then that could explain the decline. But again, the amount of replacement would have to be very large. Well, it turns out that we actually can test that to some extent. All right, and one way to test that, and I can say that I suggested this test before I had any data to test it. And what I had said is if we could get data on the share of old music that people are buying, we could see whether or not it's going down. Because what we should expect to see based on this library hypothesis is people are buying artificially large amounts while they're replacing their library. And then all of a sudden, in 1999, they've finished. And now the percentage of old music should be going down. It doesn't do that. There are two categories of old music here. Um, they are not separate. There is catalog, which includes deep catalog. And catalog, I've actually seen two different definitions of this, and I'm not sure exactly which one's right. But I believe that one is 18 months uh, or more, and the other one is 36 months or more. So they're still not that old. And, you know, we're talking about 20-year-old songs or 10-year-old songs if you're replacing something from an old technology frequently. But they would be included in these categories. And the categories should be going down, uh, but they're not. They're going up. All right, so there's no evidence to support the claim that library actually reduces, uh, that it, the effect of library is responsible for any of the decline that's occurred. I mean, it may have had an impact of, on sales in the past, but it doesn't seem like it's going to show up in 1999 and lead to a decline in sales. All right. Uh, and just think about how big library would have to be to explain the decline of 60%, which we're finding. Uh, now, there's also this claim that, uh, and people would say to me, well, DVDs are out there now, and DVDs are so great because CDs have music, and DVDs have music and pictures, and they're sort of the same price. So you get more for your money with a DVD than a CD. This is what students would say to me with a straight face. And uh, I'd say, well, but yeah, but you listen to your CD dozens of times if it's any good. How many times are you going to watch that DVD? Uh, and it doesn't matter how much money it costs to produce the DVD. That has nothing to do with your consumption of it or the market demand. Uh, but still, that was the claim that DVDs were responsible. And it is true that DVDs are relatively new. And it is true that DVDs were increasing. But that's the wrong thing to look at. DVDs did not come out of nowhere. DVDs are pre-recorded movies. We had pre-recorded movies before DVDs existed. They were called VHS tapes. All right, because VHS killed the beta machine that, that I talked about a few minutes ago, as we all know. At least everybody over 30 knows that, I presume. And uh, so here we have the amount that people spend on pre-recorded video with one other category, which is you don't just buy movies, you also rent movies. And renting a movie takes money and it takes time, just like buying a movie. And so that needs to be included as well. And one of the reasons it's important to pay attention is that there's a period of time here where rentals are declining while the pre-recorded movies' sales are going up. And if you only look at sales, you're going to get an exaggerated 
view of, of the increase in sales. Now, what would we want to see here if we wanted to say that, in fact, DVDs or pre-recorded movies are responsible for the decline in, in, in CDs? They may be substitutes, but what we would expect to see is that something dramatic happens around the year 1999 or 1998 or 2000, but something dramatic happens where suddenly there's a sharp increase in expenditure on DVDs that would cause people to stop spending money on CDs. And we don't really get that. Yes, there's an increase that's occurring, and maybe it would have an impact on CDs, but it's hard to say, because look at this one. This is a real increase. This one is going from $5 to $80. That's a, that's a $75 increase during the 80s. Here we're going from 80 to 100, it's a $20 increase. It's much smaller. What was happening? Okay, so there's the increase we're getting now, but that only goes to the year 2005. I wasn't showing you everything. After 2005, sales start going down. All right, so now you're going to have trouble explaining the decline in CDs if the major explanation for why they're declining is that people are spending more money on DVDs, and they're not. They're not spending money on DVDs anymore. It's going down. So that's a problem. Here's the increase that I was just talking about in the 80s, which is much bigger. If DVDs or pre-recorded movies was a really good substitute and really took money away from CDs, you should see it most significantly in here. Right, what do we actually see? Well, that's just about the time Greenspan was giving his talk or making his statement. This is a really robust increase in sales, while DVDs, or in this case VHS tapes, are having an enormous increase. All right, so if there's anywhere where, if DVDs cause a decline in record sales, this is where it should be showing up, and there's nothing showing up there. It's the opposite. So even if DVDs did reduce sales of records to some extent, it can't be very strong or presumably would have had some impact here. Um, so that, that's basically the, uh, the DVD story. And if you go back one second, if you take a look, DVD sales now are about the same as they were in 1999. If DVDs were any sort of reasonable share or the main cause, CD sales should be back where they were in 1999. But they're not. They've just gone down and down and down. All right, so the, the evidence for DVDs is, also, is, is really very weak. Now there's video games, another market that has had growth, uh, one that's had more growth than DVDs. Uh, but let's take a look at that period right around 1999. What happens? Well, video game sales go up to 2002, and then they go down, and they're basically not changed very much between 2000 and 2005. Uh, so it's hard to understand how that could lead to a big decline in CD sales. Then you have a big increase, all right? It's, it's, uh, apparently, all three major game systems came out with new versions right around here. So there's this big increase in expenditure. If, vi if video games were going to be causing a decline in record sales, this is where you should see it. You see a big decline in 2007, 2008, and 2009, but very minor declines, if any, earlier. All right, but here we go again. Uh, there's no major acceleration in the decline in 2007, 2008, 2009. It looks just like most of the other declines. Oh, by the way, you might be saying to yourself, well, there's one year here that's not declining. What's different about that year? That's actually the year the RIA lawsuits against individual file sharers came out. All right. uh, now, and in this period of time where there shouldn't be much of a decline because DVD uh, video games are not growing, there is a, a decline. So again, the timing doesn't really make sense. All right. Now, based on this, even if you're saying, well, the, the, the volcano and whatnot, that was all very cute. Uh, but that's not sufficient, just to have two things. Well, now we've taken a look at the two big things that happen to work in such a way that they seem to imply that file sharing is responsible for the decline. Um, we now have gone through the alternatives, the only alternatives people have come up with. I've tried looking at all of them. Uh, none of them hold water. None of them can explain virtually anything uh, of the loss consistently. Uh, is that enough? Uh, I would say yes. I would say now we have enough. But uh, the fact is we have econometricians who have looked at this. All right. And so what do they find? All right. Here are our econometricians. And, uh, well, most of them find that file sharing causes harm. 
So even if you don't want to accept the simple